CNC. So this is about the first time I blew up the CNC. And actually, all the times I've blown it up, and yes, there's been more, more than one, has been this thing, the control box. And this is how it got that hole there, and the pot has ended up coming out of the back here. So this was the first test trying to mill actual material. I'd prepared and checked everything. I'd made sure the clamping was right. I made sure I had the right G-code to actually go and mill the part I wanted. I'd made sure I had the wiring, wiring this box using the parallel port at that time. I'd positioned the spindle and I had my G-code ready to launch. So all I needed to do was press the play button with everything ready in there and of course get the spindle start turning. I had it turned off at this point with the speed control at that point at the front all the way down at the zero mark. I turned on the motor and started to bring the speed up. And there's quite a noise when this starts turning. What I wasn't expecting was that there was a bang, a flash, spark and black smoke coming from the machine with a distinct smell of burning electronics. So I turned it off, waited for the smoke to clear and started to investigate. That meant pulling this open and when I opened the control box I found this, a 7812 power regulator. This must have made the smoke and the spark and the bang. It makes a smooth 12 volts for the spindle control circuit. The motor itself is 36 volts, so that 12 volts is just used to power up the FET and the 555. The spindle FET had blown rather less dramatically. Uh, this switches the spindle motor's current, the 36 volts, at high speed. And the 555 chip was destroyed which turns what I'm doing on this pot into timed pulses to control the FET, to control the speed. So I ordered some new parts and I ordered more than one of each so I had a stock ready for new problems and then I began to investigate the root cause. I took photos of the board, started tracing it, I went online to find schematics, I converted the schematics which were kind of sketched and hand drawn and a little bit hard to read to KiCad so they were much clearer and finding the schematics was far quicker than trying to retrace my own. Uh, I then had to just double check that it was exactly the same board. And after reading the schematics, I then did a crash course on the 555. It's a very well-known timer chip, and I needed to look at how it was used for the PWM to control this, which was critical to understanding what went wrong. After doing that, I began running tests on the board using just some small power supplies, and I've replaced all the components that were blown, so it would make sense. But then I had to find out what else was wrong. At 6 volts, without the 36 volt supply for this, I could plug a scope into it and see what was happening. The spindle motor board here has two diodes. One of these, which I've connected the scope input to, charges capacitor 8 between them, and the other one discharges through the discharge pin of the 555. Now here is the trace on the scope when I'm not holding the potentiometer. If I now squish it, I can just about get a nice clean PWM trace. I've already probed these joints on the wire connectors out to here, and I'm happy with them. However, I believe the problem is actually the connection between these terminals and the tracks inside this pot. You can see what's inside it. So you've got an inside track and an outside track. The sweepers sweep the track. Uh, 20k close to 10k, there we go, 12k, that's reasonable. If I tap this slightly, there we go, and just so you can see, the crock is making what looks like good contact, but that one means the meter is detecting an open circuit. So let's contrast this with a brand new pot that has not had whatever damage this one has had. So this is a 10k pot from a little Maplin bag, and I'm going to do the same. So I'm going to take middle tap and outer tap, and there we go, roughly 10k showing there. And I'm going to give this a turn. Leave that alone. So we know this is the problem. I have another 10k pot, a nice stable one. However, it is larger than the hole for the original. A finer thread than this great big thing here. So now I've got to decide. Do I try to find a way to remount this hole? Do I make some with external enclosure? Right, next thing I'm going to have to do then is solder this in. Going to suck the solder off of this thing and remove these three cables. Going to use the scope like I did last time. We can get a nice 
clean PWM signal. If I'm happy with that, this is going back into the enclosure and I'm going to try and fire up the whole CNC with a spindle motor again. Next one. Oh, beautiful. Here we go. And I've fed one cable through here. Doesn't matter which way round it goes, as long as the central tap on the connector goes to the central tap on the pot. I'm going to take a flux pen and just go over this a little bit. Now, unlike before, where tapping this made everything a bit dicky, this time I have a nice, clean PWM signal. Look at that. And I can maybe take the time base down a bit, so we can see it a bit clearer. Look at that. That is exactly what I wanted. And I've got the spindle control coming out of the back, which saved me how to find a smaller pot or a bigger hole. And I'm quite happy with the operation. So there's the spindle connected. And let's turn it on, moment of truth. Power it up. You can hear the fan coming on. And power up the spindle. There you go, you can hear the spindle. And if I vary the pot, spindle changes beautifully. Look at that, beautifully controlled. Turn that off again.